Episode number 51 My good mother used to help me. As you do as interrupted Joe with a grateful kiss. But I lost her when I was a little older than you are, and for years had to struggle on alone, for I was too proud to confess my weakness to anyone else. I had a hard time, Joe, and shed a good many bitter tears over my failures, for in spite of my efforts I never seemed to get on. Then your father came, and I was so happy that I found it easy to be good. But by and by, when I had four little daughters around me, and we were poor, then the old trouble began again, for I'm not patient by nature, and it tried me very much to see my children wanting anything. Poor mother. What helped you then? Your father, Joe. He never loses patience, never doubts, or complains, but always hopes, and works, and waits so cheerfully that one is ashamed to do otherwise before him. He helped, and comforted me, and showed me that I must try to practice all the virtues I would have my little girls possess, for I was their example. It was easier to try for your sakes than for my own. A startled or surprised look from one of you when I spoke sharply rebuked me more than any words could have done, and the love, respect, and confidence of my children was the sweetest reward I could receive for my efforts to be the woman I would have them copy. Oh, mother, if I'm ever half as good as you, I shall be satisfied, cried Joe, much touched. I hope you will be a great deal better, dear, but you must keep watch over your bosom enemy, as father calls it, or it may sadden, if not spoil your life. You have had a warning. Remember it, and try with heart and soul to master this quick temper, before it brings you greater sorrow and regret than you have known today. I will try, mother, I truly will. But you must help me, remind me, and keep me from flying out. I used to see father sometimes put his finger on his lips, and look at you with a very kind, but sober face, and you always folded your lips tight, and went away. Was he reminding you then? Asked Joe softly. Yes. I asked him to help me so, and he never forgot it, but saved me from many a sharp word by that little gesture, and kind look. Joe saw that her mother's eyes filled, and her lips trembled as she spoke, and fearing that she had said too much, she whispered anxiously, Was it wrong to watch you, and to speak of it? I didn't mean to be rude, but it's so comfortable to say all I think to you, and feel so safe and happy here. My Joe, you may say anything to your mother, for it is my greatest happiness and pride to feel that my girls confide in me and know how much I love them. I thought I'd grieved you. No, dear, but speaking of father reminded me how much I miss him, how much I owe him, and how faithfully I should watch and work to keep his little daughters safe and good for him. Yet you told him to go, mother, and didn't cry when he went, and never complain now, or seem as if you needed any help, said Joe, wondering. I gave my best to the country I love, and kept my tears till he was gone. Why should I complain, when we both have merely done our duty and will surely be the happier for it in the end? If I don't seem to need help, it is because I have a better friend, even than father, to comfort and sustain me. My child, the troubles and temptations of your life are beginning, and maybe many, but you can overcome and outlive them all if you learn to feel the strength and tenderness of your heavenly father as you do that of your earthly one. The more you love and trust him, the nearer you will feel to him, and the less you will depend on human power and wisdom. His love and care never tire or change, can never be taken from you, but may become the source of lifelong peace, happiness, and strength. Believe this heartily, and go to God with all your little cares, and hopes, and sins, and sorrows, as freely and confidingly as you come to your mother.